Good morning everyone! Today, Creative Photo Challenge with that DJI Osmo Action. Are the photos even going to be good? I have no clue. Let's find out together. Let's go! All right, guys, I hope you're having an amazing day. So today I want to go on a little challenge with you. I want to push myself. I want us to push ourselves. We're going to go on a creative challenge with that DJI Osmo action. And for that challenge, well, there are a few things. First of all, I want to show you what settings I'm going to be using on that camera because maybe you're watching, maybe you want to know what settings to use for photos. And obviously, well, I'm going to be sharing that with you. And we're going to be looking at the photos also to see if they're good or not. Because to be honest, I've never shot with it. I've never even looked at the photos. So that is my way of really testing the camera. I mean, it's good to do reviews in studio, but nothing like going on the field, right? And to make it a little bit more spicy, to get shots that are a little bit different, I'm going to be using a bunch of filters. Um, because I was just thinking right now it's like pure blue sky so I thought why don't I try to throw in a few ND filter and a few polarizing filter on that camera to take the photos I think we can play with different effects whether it's gonna be low exposure or it's gonna be polarizing effects that can be really really cool if you don't know what polarizing does it's simply whenever you turn your filter one direction or the other what's gonna happen is that it's gonna cut out part of the reflection either in the sky or on an object or on the window as you can see right now it's really cool and before you guys even ask those are the polar pro filters and i'm so excited because they're magnetic so you can literally like clip them on and off on the camera and it's so practical i wish it was the same for uh, my main camera but it's not the case i actually jammed the filter on a filter ring and right now i'm kind of sick okay so what we're gonna do we got, i'm gonna take you on that adventure we're gonna go shoot in a bunch of places and i think it's gonna be great especially if you've been lacking ideas lately because well that's a totally different tool and we might be shooting on the floor we might be shooting in the air i don't know what we're gonna do but it's gonna be really fun tons of creative ideas and tips in this video let's get started All right, ton of cool stuff to shoot around here, but let me give you a little overview of the settings right now. We're gonna be shooting in RAW for the photos, and for some of the shots, I'm gonna set the shutter speed so I can drag the shutter a lot, but most of them, I'm gonna leave it in auto. The main reason is that there is not much to, to change on that camera, so why not use the auto mode? Because I want a fast shutter speed, it's daytime, it should work out pretty well. First thing I noticed, was that like really nice background if I can get the three doors and person walking there can be cool and I'm gonna try to shoot from the middle of the road and get the train and both buildings on each side with the polarizer on and off to cut out the reflection from that window I want to see the difference in terms of photos Woo, this is gonna be fun Guys, that woman with the yellow like dress would have been so cool on that background like contrasting with the green that would have been amazing well she went in the car so it's not gonna happen i'm gonna go uh, get the yellow bus try to see something i'm um, trying to get some a little bit creative street photography we'll be playing with a few other things after i have in mind but i need a little bit more crowd and it's not happening right here all right yellow bus what can we do well it's going away but i wanted to give you a tip before that i started shooting if you use a camera like that or even if you use like anything that has a very average light metering which means it's kind of looking at the whole frame to determine how much light and, and the sh settings for your shot absolutely try if you can to shoot at minus 0.3 ev for exposure compensation simply because for example in the suite we've got a part that is in the shade a part that is in the light in the bright sunlight and you really want to make sure that you're not burning in the bright sunlight so if you go minus 0.3 ev usually you're kind of safe if you want to be really safe go minus 0.5 i put it to minus 0.3 right now and it looks way way better okay let's see if we can get that building over here with the people walking across at the same time and when you cut out the reflection on that building it looks fully black looks kind of cool actually i I actually never use too much filters, like polarizing filters, shooting in cities with buildings like that. But I kind of like it. It makes it really fun and different.
Got a few more angles, a little bit lower on the ground, trying to get people to go through crossings and stuff like that. But right now, I just noticed two seagulls completely white that pass by, and they're so contrasting with that black windows, with those black windows, that black building, that I'm super excited. Now, all I want is to have those seagulls pass by and have them with the black windows, but I, it's, you know me and birds, I really like to get them, I don't like to Photoshop them, so it might take a little while to, to make it happen, but maybe we can get a little long exposure that can look a little nice with some blur in the crowds. Let's see, let's try what we can do. Hey, what's up guys? All right, everyone's excited, let's go. Oh, by the way, another quick tip here is that you can set what quick mode you want your camera to be in and you can turn it on and off and it simply means that when you're gonna press that button it's gonna automatically record uh, either video or photo. I set it to photo right now which means even if the camera is off when I press here it just goes back on, takes a photo and turns back off and what is actually is very surprising um, and you know I have also a GoPro that is really fast in photos even when you're shooting in RAW it saves the photos really really fast which is great in my opinion. Now, I don't know about the quality, we're gonna see that in a second. Whew. All right, tried a bunch of more stuff. We have uh, that really cool sign over here, very famous in Chicago. And the girl was smoking just under it, looked pretty cool. Also, a guy just came out of that exit and there was direct light hitting. But I missed it by half a second. He moved out of the direct light, so I have him in the staircase and out of the staircase, but out of the direct light, which kind of sucks. So if you ever shoot with those cameras, know that you might have a little delay of half a second or like a quarter of a second. But that's enough for you by the time you've pressed it that you might have missed your shots. Oh damn, another seagull. Oh damn it. Always try to plan and like press it at the right time because if you're trying to shoot in raw, you can only take one shot. If you're trying to shoot in burst mode, you can shoot in JPEG with like seven images in a second or something like that. But there is no way for you to shoot several raw images one after another. And I'm, I'm still having the polarizing filter on because I just like to cut out reflection uh, from windows and everything around me. I want to try with the ND a little bit like and get some um, slow shutter speed shots but I'm not sure where yet. Got some great light right now, great weather. It's beautiful conditions for street photography. Hope you guys are enjoying. All right guys, I'm gonna put an ND64 polarizing on and we're gonna try to uh, get a few shots with the crowd like blurred out. See how that goes. So ND64 polarizing boom I just like polarizing whenever the the sky is like that it, you can really play and like cut out reflections on building do a bunch of stuff I think it's one of those things that can really make a difference between your photos and the ones of ton of people who don't actually think about using polarizing in those situations most people just think about the beach or like water and stuff like that but city yeah hell yeah let's try some long exposures I'm gonna be shooting I think at one half a second or maybe one quarter or 0.4 seconds because there is actually a lot of light right now so let's let's try let's see all right so apparently the minimum I'm gonna be able to go to is 110 one fifth uh, one third yeah I think one one fifth or a second it's gonna be as low as I can go otherwise it's gonna be a bit burnt it's too bad they don't show you the light meter so that you know where you're at it's too bad no sorry <laughs> that that stand didn't have any lenses all right i know some of you commented hey my newspaper stand doesn't have any guys i shot a bunch of shots with that super fun 
Now I want to check out on the computer what it looks like. I'm running out of battery anyway, so I'm gonna keep a little bit for after. But what I wanted to recap is on a few ideas that I tried to shoot today. First of all, I tried to shoot with a polarizing filter just to cut out reflections from buildings when they're supposed to be reflecting the environment around. It gives a different feel and it's a little bit different from what you can see because if you shoot with your phone with a normal camera, well, usually you get the same type of photos, but when you are able to put the filter on, you get something a little bit different. And it's all about getting different things and trying different things whenever you go out and shoot. Then I played a lot on shooting low because we get a really wide angle. So I tried to get low, tried to get some composition where I can integrate the building, some people passing by, etc. And then I tried some long exposures. So for long exposures, it's a little bit not tricky. It's actually great. And I think that is stabilized. That has a stabilized sensor, which means you can shoot really low without having camera shake on the static parts. And that's, in my opinion, a great thing to play with if you have an action cam. I think that can be really fun to try and find a subject that's maybe static and the rest of the frame that's moving, that gives a little bit of contrast, always fun to shoot. Overall, I wanted to say it's, it's a fun experience. I gotta say it shoots really fast, even in raw. It saves them really fast and that's an advantage. I think I will take that camera a little bit more around to play with. If you've seen the one I did with the GoPro, the GoPro is way slower to save raw photos, which I think is a big, big downside, but that one's faster, so it's good. Now, uh, just spoiler, the GoPro is way better in hyperlapse than that camera. That camera shakes a lot. The GoPro hyperlapse was super smooth, but that's totally different topic. Okay, let's grab some food and look at the photos. I may have been a little bit overconfident about my ability to shoot at one fifth of a second. Super handheld and super sharp. I will be a little bit more careful next time for sure. So guys, I wanted to have your opinion. What do you think of those ideas? Have you tried those like camera techniques? I think it's great to do something a little bit different with a sun exposure, using filters, all that. Let me know in the comments. I have to say that camera is really fun to use. I, this is my second time using action cameras for street photography. The first time was at the airport with the GoPro Hero 7, if you remember. And I think it gives you a completely different feel than when you're shooting with your normal camera. It's a lot more discreet, a lot more compact, which makes it easier to take with you everywhere. And even if it rains, you can drop it in the, on the floor and start taking photos, which I think can be fun. Definitely gonna do more of those, having filters, on any camera is a huge advantage and you can really whenever you're bored try something a little bit different you know try something new so if you don't have ideas for your next shoot why don't you try using polarizing filters why don't you try using any filters even in daytime that gets you different results that most people don't have and that's what it's all about it's about having fun trying something different right i mean that's what I think. So with that being said, guys, if you like that video, hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, hit that SUB CRB button, ring that notification bell. And remember, guys, get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. I will see you in the next episode. Can't wait. Oh, by the way, thank you so much. We reached 80,000 subscribers. 80,000 of you. Woo! Excited. On to what? 100? Oh, yeah. Let's do it together, guys. Bye.